Starliner was a tough call, and I think if Boeing looks back on it, they wouldn't do it again. To date, this statement of former Deputy Administrator of NASA, Lori Garver, about Boeing and Starliner still seems to be correct. Not only cause delays and affect Boeing's reputation, but Starliner also caused Boeing to lose over a billion dollars for many past years. Meanwhile, its competitor, Dragon, is making crazy strides, helping SpaceX dominate the aerospace industry. So was Boeing's decision to create Starliner in the past a mistake? Will they still dare to create such a vehicle in the future? Let's dive into this topic in today's episode of TechMap. Last century, Boeing has always been a formidable name in the field of manufacturing rockets, aircraft, and many other vehicles for the United States. In particular, they also supported NASA a lot in building the legendary rocket that brought humans to the moon for the first time, Saturn V, as well as contributing to the development of the space shuttle. But in this century, Boeing showed that they were just an aged empire compared to the times. Their own rockets or the rockets they have under the ULA joint venture like Atlas V or Delta IV clearly cannot be on par with new rockets like SpaceX's including Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, or Starship. As a result, those rockets had to retire one by one. The biggest hope of Boeing right now is probably the Vulcan Centaur. The rocket achieved its first success earlier this year. However, to achieve that success, the Vulcan Centaur also experienced many years of delay. Boeing is currently truly weak in the competition with new generation companies like SpaceX. This is probably something they wouldn't think of 10 years ago. That's why at that time they decided to compete with SpaceX with a vehicle called Starliner. After the space shuttle was retired, NASA had to rely on private companies to develop solutions to send crew to the ISS. Boeing is also involved with this project with Starliner. In 2014, they were awarded $4.2 billion by NASA to develop this spacecraft. They then received another $300 million, increasing the total value of the contract they received to $4.5 billion, becoming the company receiving the largest contract among companies participating in NASA's program. Meanwhile, SpaceX's contract is $2.6 billion, only over half of Boeing's. So what Boeing has done after those big favors? After receiving the contract, Boeing began production and testing of the Staliner, intending to launch a crew mission in 2017. But after that, it took them a lot of time to change the design and fix errors in the spacecraft, causing the test schedule and launch schedule to be postponed. It was not until November 2019 that they completed the pad abort test with Starliner. But just a month later, they encountered a failure on their first uncrewed mission to the ISS due to software errors that prevented Starliner from connecting to the ISS and had to return to Earth after two days of flight. Fortunately, more than two years later in May 2022, Starliner reached the ISS on its second uncrewed flight. At that time, they were confident that the first crewed flight would take place by the end of 2022. But as you know, that flight has not been launched to date. Last year, Starliner struggled to resolve electric wiring and parachute system problems problems, and the launch date was pushed back to April this year. With those delays, Boeing was greatly affected in economic aspects. In its 2023 second quarter cost report, the company lost $257 million due to Starliner problems. Combined with previous years, Boeing has lost $1.47 billion since developing Starliner in 2014. Instead of becoming the new pride, Starliner has been a major financial burden for Boeing for many years. Contrary to the Starliner, Dragon has made seven crewed flights to the IS and many other cargo launch missions. With the Starliner delay, Dragon has also received additional contracts to launch more crewed missions through 2030. Overall, they have completed half of the missions NASA set out in three years, and they also have six years left to complete the remaining missions, of which the closest mission in the coming time is Crew 8, scheduled for February 22. And I believe with current capability, SpaceX will easily complete the remaining tasks. Besides causing delays and wasting costs, Starliner is also expected exposing a weakness and problem that Boeing will face in the future, choosing a launch vehicle. Before going any further, if you find this information useful, remember to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now, let's go back to today's episode. After the aforementioned delays, it seems that Boeing has also resolved the problem with Starliner and they are aiming for its first flight in April. But this opens up a new challenge for them. Starliner is designed to be compatible with rockets such as Atlas V, Delta IV, Falcon 9, and Vulcan Centaur. Delta IV has been retired for a long time, so we don't need to talk about it. As for Atlas V, as I mentioned, it will also retire soon. Although Starliner is currently still planning to launch this rocket on its first flight, don't forget that after that flight, Starliner will have at least five other crewed missions to the ISS within the next six years according to NASA contract. And I think Atlas V will not be able to accompany Starliner until then. 
Boeing will now have two options left, Vulcan Centaur and Falcon 9. But each of these has its own challenges. Vulcan Centaur is a rocket designed by ULA to replace old rockets such as Atlas V. The first Vulcan flight on January 8 was successful, opening up a bright future for ULA and a good sign for Starliner. However, everything is not as good as many imagined. To date, Vulcan schedules still have no appearance of Starliner. In addition, Vulcan Centaur will still have to handle many other missions that Atlas V was not finished, such as launching payloads for the U.S. Space Force. Vulcan even may no longer be under Boeing's control as ULA is facing many problems, leading to the possibility that they have to sell the company to another owner. Everything is still uncertain, but if this truly happens, Boeing will not lose the last autonomous option to launch future Starliner missions. So, what about the Falcon 9 option? This, of course, is a great choice. Falcon 9 is currently the most launched rocket in the year, and it is approaching the milestone of 300 launches in history, helping SpaceX create dominance over the rest of the world. Additionally, this rocket is also dominating in the reuse strategy with more than 250 booster landings, especially Booster B-1058 reaching 19 landing times, something that both Atlas V and Vulcan could never do. It's truly a superiority of a new generation company like SpaceX over Boeing. But this would be a big humiliation for Boeing. Starliner was created to compete with SpaceX's Dragon. If they have to ask for help from your competitors, it will be a big failure for Boeing, not only in terms of money, but also regarding the reputation of a company that has been famous for producing rockets for decades. It's a bad situation, right? Losing to opponents in the race to send crew into orbit and then gradually exposed weaknesses in rocket production. This shows that Boeing is too backward and it is difficult for them to stand firm in the current fierce competition. But Boeing chose to create the Starliner and now they will have to keep moving forward. In the coming time, they have to prepare carefully and then perform well in their first crew mission. It will not only prove Starliner's capabilities after many years of development, but also determine the future of this vehicle in particular and Boeing in general. And in the future, perhaps... Boeing will no longer risk creating any new vehicle after its valuable experiences with Starliner. The current race is no longer suitable for their capability. It is truly a sad story for one of the leading organizations of the aerospace industry in the past, but that is the inevitable law of life. Only through continuous innovation and development, we can survive and compete in a fierce space race. And now, such people are standing at the pinnacle of the aerospace industry. They are Elon Musk and SpaceX. And you, what do you think about the Boeing Starliner problem? What would be the best option for them? Please leave your opinion in the comment section below. In 2014, SpaceX and Boeing joined NASA's commercial crew program together. One was a venerable giant with a legacy in aerospace that stretched back more than 100 years and a role in every major moment in NASA's history. The other was a relative upstart that in its early days was derided as little more than a delusional billionaire's fantasy and that critics said was building its rockets out of wax and rubber bands. No one thought Elon Musk's SpaceX would ever beat Boeing to space. However, the result is completely opposite, recognized by astronauts. The whole world watched the miraculous landings and flights that took humans beyond the boundaries of the Earth and the astronauts' favor for SpaceX Dragon emerged as something undeniable. Meanwhile, Starliner is still struggling to fix the software, hoping the first manned flight will go smoothly after many delays. And even if it does fly in the near future, the astronauts won't care about it anymore. And the question is, why do astronauts prefer SpaceX Dragon to Starliner? Dragon is the spacecraft developed by SpaceX. It has enjoyed remarkable success and has become a cornerstone in space exploration. The spacecraft's resiliency and reliability were demonstrated through a series of successful missions, especially those involving ferrying crews to the International Space Station. Since then, Dragon has received the trust of space agencies and the admiration of astronauts. The latest completed flight with a crew was Axiom Mission 2. Dragon was once mocked as just a trampoline, but now it has become much more superior. It was launched on May 21, 2023 and successfully docked a month later. SpaceX, we would like to tell you, that was a phenomenal ride, said Axe to Commander Peggy Whitson, a former NASA astronaut and veteran of four space flights just after splashdown. We really enjoyed all of it. Every story comes to an end, and this is only the beginning of a new era for our country and our region. Barnaby said during a farewell ceremony on the ISS on May 29. So, why 
Just like to thank everyone here who has helped us, she added, fighting back tears. These guys, they welcomed us on board, the Axe 2 commander said, referring to the crew members of the ISS Current Expedition 69 mission. And they've helped us a lot, but they've also just been so courteous and kind. And we really appreciate all of that. We felt at home while we were here. Thank you, and I will be back. The previous flight, SpaceX Crew-6, was launched on March 2, 2023, and docked with the International Space Station nearly one month later. The members of SpaceX's Crew-6 mission, which has spent more than six months aboard the International Space Station, delivered their farewell remarks from orbit, thanking everyone for their support as they prepared to depart on September 2. When we showed up here six months ago, it was a new experience for all of us, NASA astronaut and crew 6 Commander Stephen Bowen said during the live-streamed remarks on NASA television. I'd been to space, but never been on a long-duration mission, and this has been an absolutely incredible experience. I felt that I'm responsible, obligated, to show what's happening with the station, Al Niadi, the first person from the UAE to do a long-duration mission and a spacewalk said of his outreach focused especially on the UAE, which included hundreds of posts on social media with pictures and videos that documented his daily activities. I think it's a small boost towards spreading the enthusiasm in our region. I can't be happier. With the time I was here, I was doing everything possible. The interests of these astronauts are not merely coincidental, rather. They stem from the outstanding features and capabilities built into Dragon's design. During both missions, astronauts experienced firsthand the cutting-edge technology and innovations that make Dragon stand out. And obviously, Starliner was quickly forgotten. So why? Why is Dragon given greater priority by astronauts? For the most part, one thing is for sure. The Dragon's success has been proven through completed flights. It is very safe and reliable. Since 2020, the crewed Dragon spacecraft has performed 10 missions, seven flights for NASA and three flights for commercial customers. These flights included many firsts, such as Inspiration4, the first fully commercial space flight, and Axiomone, the first fully commercial mission to the ISS. Several more Axiom flights, as well as commercial flights from Polaris, the Inspiration 4's successor, are planned. To tell all of SpaceX's missions, an eight-minute video cannot cover them all. Regular flights to the ISS are not only an opportunity to participate in research and experiments, but also provide an immersive experience in space. For astronauts, schedule flexibility is an important factor. Meanwhile, Boeing is still trying to conduct the first test flight with a crew taking off from the ground in April 2024. On top of that, in terms of size and capacity, the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft has a diameter of 3.7 meters and a length of 8.1 meters, while the Boeing Starliner spacecraft has a diameter of 4.56 meters and a length of 5.3 meters. This means that the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft is somewhat wider and taller than the Boeing Starliner spacecraft. Astronauts have more space to move and work. The roomier confines of the Crew Dragon spacecraft offer astronauts, allowing them to navigate and conduct experiments with greater ease. This additional space becomes particularly crucial during long-duration missions, where comfort and functionality play pivotal roles in ensuring the well-being and efficiency of the crew. The Crew Dragon spacecraft can accommodate a maximum of seven astronauts, while NASA's commercial crew program doesn't require more than four astronauts at a time. SpaceX faced challenges related to concerns about gay forces during splashdown. In response to these concerns, SpaceX had to adjust the angle of the seats. This modification meant that they could no longer accommodate seven seats as originally planned. Consequently, they had to reduce the seating capacity to just four. However, even with this reduction, SpaceX Dragon still boasts a greater capacity compared to its competitor. What's more, the astronaut's favoritism towards Dragon is not only rooted in its modern design or flight safety, but also in the cost-effectiveness it brings to space exploration. At a price tag of $55 million per seat, Dragon stands out as a more economical choice compared to its counterpart, Starliner, which demands a heftier $90 million per seat. The financial aspect becomes particularly notable when considering that Starliner, at its current price, 
has yet to undergo crewed flights. This raises eyebrows among the space exploration astronauts, as the $90 million per seat expense seems particularly steep for a spacecraft that has not yet proven its capabilities with a crew on board. In summary, Boeing created Starliner. It was not only a failure but also ruined this aerospace company. The extended timeline introduces a series of challenges and implications for the potential aerospace company Boeing. Boeing has faced several technical problems with Starliner, including software problems during the spacecraft's first uncrewed test flight. So, the mission's liftoff has been repeatedly postponed. CFT was supposed to fly this July, but that plan was scrapped after teams discovered problems with Starliner's wiring and parachute system. Phil McAllister, the director of NASA's Commercial Space Division, stated that plans for the Crew Flight Test Mission, or CFT, were on track for a launch as early as April 14. This will be a potential flight test, and Boeing has been struggling to get their Starliner capsule working for so long. Boeing's delay further shows that it is still very far from being able to catch up with SpaceX in this space race. SpaceX, Starliner's main competitor, has had much success transporting astronauts to and from the ISS. What challenges does Boeing still have to face in the coming time? While we eagerly await the return of SpaceX's Crew-7 mission, NASA has announced the crew members who will participate in the next orbit to the ISS called SpaceX Crew-8. The precise launch date of SpaceX's Crew-8 mission has not yet been confirmed, but it is expected to take place in the first quarter of 2024. Crew-8 will take over for Crew-7, which is set to launch from Kennedy Space Center in the coming weeks. Because Crew-7 intends to stay on the ISS for six months, Crew-8 could launch in February. This is one of the big challenges for Starliner. Because SpaceX will make the 8th crewed flight, and Boeing doesn't know if the upcoming flight will be postponed again in April 2024. Boeing also had other software-related challenges, and it had difficulty transitioning to using a new rocket, the Vulcan Centaur. Before that, Starliner was designed to launch into space on United Launch Alliance's ULA Atlas V rocket. The Starliner problems have also damaged Boeing's reputation. In other words, Starliner is Boeing's time bomb. The company has been known for its long history of developing reliable products and services, but Starliner has shaken this belief. So what do you think about those issues? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Comment below. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.